Any questions about Uranus? Okay. So if Uranus, you know, goes into the second house, it's a seven year transit. Your money is going to go up and down. You'll have more of a tendency to, to speculate when it's going through the money house goes through the career. When Uranus goes into the career house, you have to tell the person if there's anything that you've always wanted to do now is the time to do it. If Uranus hits the sixth house, goes into the sixth house, they're probably going to change their job. It's changes. And they're going to need to have freedom in the career for those seven years. Neptune is, Neptune is very much like Ketu. It is illusion, deception, oil, gas, magic, film, photography. Almost everything that Ketu is, Neptune is. Neptune is illusion. It's like gas or oil. You can't grab it, okay? So wherever Neptune is in the horoscope, you cannot get a grasp. You cannot get a grasp. So if Neptune is in the fourth house of mother, the mother may be alcoholic and you can never, you can never get her attention because she's alcoholic like that. Neptune in the fourth house could be the mother died. She doesn't exist. She left home. You can't, you try to grab and you can't grab. It's, it's like, like illusion. Okay. But on the positive side, Neptune is mysticism, idealism, psychic energy, everything beyond the five senses. Now, Neptune in its transits is unlike Uranus and Pluto because Neptune is so illusion and deception and weird and strange that you can have a Neptune transit and not know it, not feel it. I, like, if I'm looking at a major transit, Uranus is going to hit the, when Uranus hit the sun in my horoscope, that's when I suddenly found out about spiritual stuff, meditation and vegetarianism. Uranus opened me up. That's what it does. It, but when Neptune hits, Sometimes you'll feel it, sometimes you will not even feel it because it's so nebulous. Neptune in the first house erodes the confidence. If it's very close to the ascendant, if it's very close to the ascendant, you can't even see yourself clearly. You just can't see yourself clearly. And... Um, you may be affected by things that are not real. Like there are people who have Neptune in the first house and they're just not down to earth and practical. You know, they're, it, it's, it's, it, it's a little bit hard to explain, but um, on one hand, if it's close to the ascendant, the person's spiritual, but they have no boundaries. They're spiritual so their whole perspective is like, oh, the world, the universe, but they can't get a hold of their own confidence because that's a, the, the person is very localized. And if Neptune is on the ascendant, there's no localization. It's all big and out there. And so those kind of people can believe in conspiracies and they can believe in weird stuff that makes no sense like that. On the positive side, they will be very idealistic, very, you know, oh, I can find God or I can, we can do this and it's going to change the world. The idealism, Neptune is idealism. Neptune in the second house erodes the money. So you may never feel, people with Neptune in the second house often cannot feel like they have enough money, even though they get rich they still inside feel that they don't have money. They, they, they can't get a hold of it. They can't, even though they have it, it doesn't feel real to them. Neptune in the third house is kind of like Uranus in the third. The mind is completely open to everything. But Neptune in the third house would indicate 
insanity or craziness more than anything in the Western system, because the, the third house is the mind. And so people that have Neptune in the third house, they have a hard time gripping reality. Um, in the Hindu system, brothers and sisters, Neptune in the third house would be very bad for brothers and sisters. They could die. They could, I mean, don't take that. Don't think that every time you see Neptune in the third, someone dies. I don't mean that, but they could be useless to you. They could say, yes, I have a brother, but I never talked to him. He's useless. That would be Neptune because you can't get a hold of it. You try to get a hold of it and you can't grab it. Um, the fourth house I've said would be that, that you, you can't get a hold of your mother. <laughs> you can't get a hold of, in this case, you can't get a hold of land or real estate. If Neptune's in the fourth house, you're likely to have leaking oil or gas leaking in the home, oil or gas leaking in a car. So if Neptune transits your fourth house, your car could start leaking. Your house could start leaking. Um, if Neptune is in the fourth house, you can have cars where there's a problem, but they can't find the problem because it's Neptune. If Neptune's in the house of health, the sixth house, they can't find the problem, the health problem because it's Neptune. They look everywhere. They can't find it because it's not localized. It's, it's weird and strange. Um, so Neptune in the fourth house is very difficult because you can't get a hold of your mother. Neptune in the fifth house would not be good for children. Children could be crazy. Children could be drugs. Drugs and alcohol is Neptune. If Neptune's in the first, the person may be attracted to drugs or alcohol, if they're not attracted to mystical, spiritual. They're going to be attracted to one or the other. Um, so Neptune in the fifth house, children could be involved in drugs or alcohol. Children could be, you know, useless. You can't get a hold of them. You can't grab, you, they're not, you know, they're of no use to you. Um, now remember, don't take these things too literally because Neptune could be in the fifth house aspected extremely well in the Western system. And then you would get a child who's a mystic, not an alcoholic or a drug addict. You know, I'm just trying to give you the feel for the planet. Okay. Neptune in the sixth house. I have Neptune in the sixth house. So I have health problems, but they can't find out what causes them. And you cannot heal health problems that come from the sixth house with drugs and typical medical the illnesses are usually caused by stress, stress. And so they have to be healed, not through chemicals and drugs. They have to be healed through natural, through Ayurveda, acupuncture, um, herbs. They have to be healed through getting enough rest and like that. The, and somebody who has Neptune in the sixth house will be very sensitive to drugs. I never wound up drinking alcohol because of, if I have one beer, I have one beer, I will feel it the next day because Neptune in the sixth house makes you very sensitive. Neptune in the seventh house, very difficult placement. Unless it's very well aspected, difficult placement. You cannot get a hold of the partner. So the partner could be drugs, alcohol, illusion, deception. Very much like Ketu. Um, so the partner, um, what happens is if you have Neptune in the sev seventh house, wherever Neptune is, you're very idealistic and very feeling. Uranus is an ele electrical planet, very sudden, electrical. Neptune is all feeling, but too much feeling. It's too much mystical. Oh, I love that. And it's so much feeling. So the person has Neptune in the seventh house, they go after partners that are not so good and they can't see it. The person is so in love because they have these great ideals in relationship, they can't even see that the other person's cheating on them. They can't see that the other person's not as good as them. So person with Neptune in the seventh house, a 
attracts lousy partners usually that are unreliable, illusion, deception, drugs, alcohol, unreliable, uh, unable to commit. And all of the person's friends, they look at that spouse or that lover and they say, that person is no good for you. Everybody else can see there's something wrong with that person, except for the person with Neptune in the seventh house. The other thing about Neptune in the seventh house is that the person oftentimes will find someone that they're going to fix. In other words, they find someone who has problems and they say, oh, they have problems. I'll fix your problems. And you can't. You think you can, but you can't. They're going to take care of them. They're going to nurse them. They're going to, you know, heal them. It doesn't work. The best you can do with Neptune in the seventh house is to find a partner that's mystical and spiritual and pursuing enlightenment. That's the best you can do. Neptune in the eighth house would be good for spiritual, mystical, uh, astral experiences, life after death, but would be bad for, in, for money from partners, bad for um, alimony, and child payments and wills, legacies, insurance companies, you, you would have trouble with those. Neptune in the ninth house would be bad for gurus. Now you could get a guru that's very spaced out and illusion and deception and stuff like that, which might be okay. But otherwise there would be illusion, deception and problems with religion and philosophy. Neptune in the 10th house, the career, you try to get a hold of the career and you can't get a hold of it. It goes through you. It's good to have a spiritual mystical career with Neptune in the, in the 10th house. That's about the only thing. You, well, you could use it for film and photography, magic, oil, gas, but for most, any worldly career, Neptune's not going to help. Not going to help. Nep, the 10th house is the father. Now in India, some use the ninth and some use the 10th. In Western, we use the 10th as the father. Neptune in the 10th will be alcoholic father. Father leaves home. You can't get a hold of your father like that. But the best thing is to have a spiritual mystical career. Otherwise, there's going to be problems with Neptune in the 10th house. Problems due to illusion, deception, confusion, things like that. Neptune in the 11th would be friends and groups would not be good for friends and groups. It would be good if you had mystical, spiritual, idealistic friends, but generally the Neptune in the 11th house is not gonna be so good for friends and groups. These friends could be alcoholic or drugs, illusion, deception, you can't get a hold of them, unreliable, they lie to you, like that. Neptune in the 12th would be more spiritual, It'd be more about enlightenment and spiritual and things like that. Um, so Neptune in a transit, conjuncting the sun, conjuncting the moon, can open up a person to realities beyond the five senses, which is wonderful. Or Neptune could come along and cause illusion deception. Neptune comes along and transits the moon. Suddenly the females in your life, you can't rely on them. They're, they're lying or cheating. Neptune conjuncts Venus, and there could be lying or cheating with the love partner. If Uranus hits Venus, then there could be changes of love matters, excitement in love matters. You could meet somebody when Uranus hits, hits Venus, and it could be the most exciting thing in the world, but it doesn't last because Uranus is up and down and changes. For opening up a person to things that they don't already know about, realities beyond the senses, Uranus is the best. Uranus hits you and suddenly, oh my God, there's something more I didn't know about. When people come for an astrological reading, sometimes it's Jupiter. Sometimes Jupiter is making an aspect to the sun or the moon or the ascendant. But most of the time, Uranus is hitting a planet or the sun or the first house cusp. Uranus hits and the person starts, oh, I, oh, I have to call an astrologer. They feel excited, like there's some information somewhere. Like that. 
Pluto, my favorite planet, Pluto. Yeah, I would like to ask you something here. Yeah. Basically, what I have understood from your discussion, at least apart from Pluto, is these two planets are like, to some extent, like Rahu, you would say? No. No? No. <laughs> the only thing I can say about Rahu, Rahu represents insatiable cravings and desires for worldly power. Oh, okay. That's the essence of Rahu. If it's in the 10th house, cravings and desires for career. If it's in the money house, cravings for money. If it's in the first house, cravings for some recognition. If it's in the fifth house, cravings for children. And, of course, it causes problems because it's a malefic. So in the second house, it's terrible for family life. But it's, com it's very different. These are very specific influences. So there's nothing Neptunian about Pluto, that's for sure, about Rahu. Now, Rahu does have one characteristic of Uranus. One. When a person enters a Rahu Dasha, I would say 60 to 70% of the time, not 100%, 60 to 70% of the time, the person comes to Rahu Dasha and there are massive changes. Father dies, divorce, uh, career change, go live in another country, massive changes. For the, if, it, if, if it occurs, you'll know it within two or three months. Rahu comes along within two months, the big changes. If the changes come, they will go for two and a half years during Rahu Rahu. Then by Rahu Jupiter, things settle down. So in that sense, Rahu has a little bit of Uranus in it, but that's all. Uranus represents science, and Rahu, they say, is like science as well. So maybe there's that. But, but Rahu is more smothering, intense, domineering cravings and desires. In a Rahu Dasha, you have no peace of mind or contentment because the cravings and desires don't stop. The cravings and desires don't stop. Uranus comes along, hits something, and you get all excited about it, and after six months or a year, after the transit is finished, it's over. Like that. Okay. But in the house that it's in, you'll always be that way. In the marriage house, you'll always want a partner that is advanced, ahead of the times, um, um, no rules and regulations. This is not Rahu, in my opinion. So Pluto, my favorite planet is Pluto. Pluto is the strongest planet in my horoscope from the Western method of which are the strongest planets. So Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are all spiritual. Uranus wakes you up. Uranus hit my son, and I said, oh my God, there's this spiritual world. That's what Uranus does. It wakes you up. And, it hits uh, it's like uh, when you say like this planet is here, there's so what do you think about the signs? Like we have exaltation and debilitation for other planets. So, for Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto? For Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, I mean, like you said, for Aquarius and that. But in general, I am saying, what do you think? Like they say, Rahu Ketu does, like they say, Rahu does good in art signs and air signs. So in, any similar observation have you, did you have for these three? You know, I don't look that much to the signs for Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, but Uranus rules Aquarius. Uh, I think they say Pluto is very good in Leo. Neptune would be great. Neptune rules Pisces, like that. But I, I don't do too much with those things. Um, of course, if I see Uranus in Aquarius, I know it's great. Uranus in Pis uh, Neptune in Pisces is great. Pluto in Scorpio, Pluto rules Scorpio, it's great. But um, the, the Uranus comes along and it wakes you up to things that you didn't otherwise know, okay? Neptune is a mystical, spiritual kind of influence, and Neptune is illusion deception. So when you see, if you see in a, in a prashna on health, someone asks a question about health, you see Uranus, you know there's going to be spasms, spasms, electrical, the electrical system's going to go crazy. If you see Neptune, 
if you see Neptune, it's going to be bacteria, virus. You know that the person has eaten some bad food and it's gotten in the system, rotten food, virus, you know, like that. And um, have you seen the, like they say that planets aspect the 7,000, some planets have other aspects also. So do you see that if suppose Uranus is transiting a particular house, it can also aspect and affect the... Seven? You see in the West, I have the Western system. So okay. so we have sextiles, squares, oh. trines, and oppositions. So that's what I'm looking at. Okay. But this does not exist. I can't tell you what Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto are going to aspect in that system. I, who knows? I don't know. Yeah, and another thing is like... But uh, that's why, if you, if, you, if you get this book and you uh, read the aspects, okay, if you, you get the Western aspects, draw a Western chart separate from the Hindu. If you see Uranus opposite the moon, you read in that book, what is Uranus opposite the moon? It means females will be unstable. The emotions will be up and down until, you know, if it's a natal, if it's Uranus moon natally, your whole life, the emotions are up and down. If it's Neptune with the moon natally, Neptune's near the moon, the person is like a sponge. They are so sensitive. They are so sensitive that they, they, they're like a sponge. They, they're very delicate. They, they have to leave if the atmosphere is too, you know, too upsetting. So you can you can read the Western aspects there. Yeah, and one more thing I wanted to ask is, uh, suppose you see in somebody's chart that suppose Venus is conjunct Uranus or any other planet, suppose. or So have you seen that apart from, as you said, if Venus is conjunct Uranus, that it will always be there that they will be attracted to those kind of people. But apart from that, I'm saying that suppose Venus Dasha gets activated. So then have you seen that their whole life kind of becomes like that search for Uranus type. Yes, of you can't. It, first of all, if Venus is with Uranus, that means that the love life, the person has numerous, numerous, numerous partners. They don't want to be, they don't want to be married. They want freedom. They want independence. They want to have lots of partners and they want partners that are exciting. Venus, oh. Uranus, Venus Uranus is the typical divorce aspect because if it, because it gets boring. Okay. And they need excitement. They need excitement. Um, so uh, uh, if I see the person's coming to Venus Dasha and Venus is opposite Uranus or conjunct Uranus, yes. I do not expect that Venus Dasha to be normal. Okay. It will be very uncomfortable. But I, can't, I, can't, but I, can't, I don't have anything to tell you as to what it will be, but it will not be ordinary. It will be unexpected stuff. It'll be out of the ordinary. You may wonder, why is the Venus Dasha so weird? It's because of Uranus aspect. Oh, okay. It's not going to be normal. And it's probably not going to be... It's, it's not like Jupiter or v Venus or Moon. It's a malefic. So oh, if, I see, if I see a Dasha of a planet conjunct Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, I don't usually like it. Okay. Not usually good. Now, Pluto...